What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial looking at parallel compression. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on parallel compression. This is something I fucking get asked about all the times. First, I just want you guys to take a look at my performance bar. It's still freaking out, Presonus. Help us out, bro. Fix this shit. Fix it now. Um, yeah, so parallel compression. Um, uh, a lot of... Um, a lot of um, people who are looking to um, fatten up their drums, they you know they go online and they they, they they read information from people. They go on a they go on a Facebook group or they go on a forum and they're like, "Yo, how do I make my drums fat?" And then somebody's like, "Parallel compression," and they get all these comments about parallel compression and um, compressor settings and, and and what to do. But nobody really explains like why even do it you know um just because just because you take a drum bus and you smash it and you blend it in doesn't mean it's going to sound good you have to have an understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing so i rarely use parallel compression because i buy good drum samples um you know that are already that have already been processed by an expert sound designer who knows what the who knows what they're doing and um but sometimes um in 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 certain cases i'll use this especially like trap snares and things like that trap snares are very um like very pokey in the transients and they don't have a lot going on in the release so i will parallel compress something with the intention of of making the sound fatter and by fatter i mean by making the release of the su of the sound longer um not longer but more audible so let's take a look at this snare if, if you guys notice first of all you'll notice that i'm working in all audio tracks right here and you're gonna you're gonna wonder why and i'm gonna tell you why it's because of this uh cpu performance issue that i've started a ticket with personas and if you guys are having this issue please start a ticket with them so we could get them all over this and uh, finally get this out of my life but for forever but for right now i'm doing the majority of my composition inside of machine um, because I forgot how much fun it was to produce in this thing and you know I just I, I, I have these audio tracks here and machines going crazy or Presonus is going crazy and I have you know like five instances of Omnisphere and a whole bunch of other stuff going on I've got my screen capture popping and uh, another DAW open and machine is just you know sitting down there with the lowest CPU usage so um, that's proof that it's not my fucking computer. Um, so anyway, enough crying about that. I'm still going to do Studio One tutorials. Uh, the premium members are still going to get their content. Um, all of that, all of that is not in jeopardy. It's just for, um, you know, for my personal stuff. When I'm not teaching, I prefer to not have these issues. So if we look at this snare right here, you'll see that it is, um, it's a very short snare to begin with. So that is why I'm running into this um, issue of just it being just really pokey. Let's listen to it also. So you, you can hear the, you know, it's real papery and pokey and it's not, it's not really ha have a lot of thud and thump to it. And I don't want to just throw a bunch of EQ at it and bring up the frequencies I don't necessarily want to hear. I like the tone of the snare. This is why I'm going to use uh, parallel compression because I like the tone of it. I don't want to play with the EQ. I like the way the snare sounds, but I want to hear more of this part of the snare right here. This is fine. So that's our initial attack. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to hold down alt and create a brand new uh, track and when you hold down alt and click and drag a track down the reason why I do it like that is because it copies all my routing information um, and it's a direct copy of the channel and the region um, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add a compressor I'll add a compressor that we all have I'll use the studio one stock compressor and I'm just going to go with really heavy aggressive 
uh, compression. So when you think aggressive progr uh, the progression, compression, when you think aggressive, you want a fast attack, a long release because you want that you want that compressor to hold um, the whole the whole time. Let's look at uh, let's switch our time base into seconds and see what we're what we're working with here. This is what's this? This is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eighty milliseconds, probably. So just I just want the compressor to hold, you know, the the length of this sound. I don't want it to you know overwork that's why I do that now I'm going to set the ratio to 10 1 keep the knee where it's at and I'm gonna just um, throw this threshold down really far until I get just an obnoxious amount of compression <laughs> All right, so if you pay attention to the fader right here, um, that white mark is how much compression we're getting. You see, it's just it's just slamming that snare down. I'm gonna increase the release, get it to hold a little bit more. Okay, cool. So you can't really you can't really hear it at that volume, right? So because it's so low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the compressor and I'm just going to turn up the gain. I'll turn it up really obnoxious so you can hear what it's doing to the snare. All right, so you can really hear um, the end of that tail. So I'll go ahead and pull this back in the context of the mix. And what I'm going to do is the way that I like to do these things is I will listen to the snare in the context of the mix and turn the gain up until I hear it start to work and then pull it back a little bit. And that's usually how I found the find the balance. So I think I like that right there. You notice I, I I close my eyes and I have I have my um my hand on my trackball. This is the reason why I like using a trackball because it's stationary. You can do it, and you really want to. You don't want to look at your levels when you're doing shit like this. You want to listen. This is not something that you can do with your eyes. You got to do it with your ears. Um, I like I like the way the snare is poking out. So let's let's go ahead and A B it now. So that's such a big difference. It's a subtle difference, but it's a big one. Like the snare isn't any louder, but you hear it. You hear the um, the whole sample now with this um, with this aggressive compression blended in. So that gives the perception of fatness. <laughs> So yeah, guys, that is parallel compression in a nutshell. Um, the way that I use it in it um, the most often, it is simply to take a sound that you have in your mix and you've done, you know, a couple different things. You've 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 gain staged everything. This isn't something that you do like right away. Like you don't pick a snare and be like, I'm gonna parallel compress that. No. You, you get your gain staging right, you get your levels right, you know, you start working in the mix and then all of a sudden that snare starts to sound a little bit papery, you know, just, just copy your snare, put an aggressive compressor on it, high attack, high ratio, low threshold, um, and, and, and a long release so that, so that you get it, so you get that, um, 
perception of pulling up the uh, the volume in the release, and when you you know when you blend it in correctly, you're going to have the perception of a more present snare, even if it's a dodgy short release trap snare. And this is how um, you know this is the difference between you know between a professionally mixed. Um, you know trap track where you know where they've got these stupid papery snares but they're still you know up front and present in the mix this is you know this this is the technique that's happening so i hope you know you guys can use this in a very practical way i also hope that you don't just put this on every one of your goddamn drum sounds thinking that this is what makes drum sounds good i really hope that it's sinking in that you need to understand a technique before you employ it in your tracks because it is only when you have understanding of the tool that you can use it to sculpt art so this is concrete zebra with craftmaster productions studio one tutorials.com personas fix this shit